Okay, welcome to this video. We're gonna be talking about selling information. Now, this video series is obviously about how to create kick-ass sales pages. And the important thing to keep in mind is that the sales copy and the way that the sales page is laid out is gonna depend greatly on what the heck it is you're selling. And I see a lot of people screwing it up when it comes to selling information. The important thing to remember when you're selling information is that it's not the information you need to focus on. I'm gonna expand about that in just a second here. Okay, so even though the product is comprised of information or knowledge, that's not what you need to sell them on. And when I say them, I mean your prospect, your visitor. People believe nowadays that information is easy to come by and, and you can't blame them, right? Because we live in a society of, of Google and YouTube and it really becomes more about the source of the knowledge and the experience of its consumption that pushes people over the edge, right? You can't just type up a, a book report basically on a subject and, and sell it and expect to have this huge business and make millions and gazillions of dollars, right? Because that information that you curated or that you basically researched and put together into that text document, it's out there. It's readily available. It's freely available, actually, to anyone. Uh, I mean, it used to be that we would have to go to the library and do this research. Now, that step is completely gone. I mean, whatever happened to the Dewey Decimal System? We don't know. We don't need it anymore. It's, it's all on Google right now. So if you want to find out about, I don't know, how to bake a cake, you literally just go and you Google it. So it becomes tougher to sell a recipe book about how to bake a cake. When you can go to Google, Google it, not only will you get the recipe, you'll get like a gazillion recipes and you'll have videos that show you somebody doing it. So it becomes tougher. And if you're just selling the recipe and you're saying, man, this recipe is awesome, this recipe has 10 ingredients, and you're talking just about the parts of the information that you're selling, you're missing the boat. The other problem with selling information is that unlike selling a gizmo, a widget, a physical item, there's no features slash benefit kind of thing that I could list in bullets, right? Because it's information. So let's talk a little bit about how we position this so that people get excited, so that they start salivating to buy your information, even though it's readily available on Google for free, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Selling the source. Notice that's what I bold-faced in that line there. Selling the source of the information is what's paramount. We live in the information age of Google. I just mentioned this. And your customers, they think that they can learn everything that they need for free on either Google or YouTube or who knows what else. Heck, nowadays, you can probably just go to a social network and type in a question live and literally in real time start getting answers to your question from your friends. So it becomes tougher and tougher to convince them that they should pay you for information. It really becomes more about expertise. Like why should you be the person that they're getting this information from and not their friends on social media or somebody that they don't know on YouTube? Well, they're first gonna question the validity of what it is that you're trying to teach. And they require proof of your expertise and or that the information will lead to tangible results. This is the part that I just mentioned most people screw up when they're selling information. They start focusing on just the info products. So you create an ebook on training dogs, right? And here's what I mean by creating an ebook and training dogs. You're selling information, knowledge that you had in your head based on past years experience in dog training. But you decide that you're gonna focus on all the cool tricks that someone's dog is gonna learn when they read your ebook, right? You focus on, hey, he's gonna learn how to fetch. Hey, he's gonna learn how to roll over. Hey, he's gonna learn how to play dead. Hey, he's gonna learn how to do my trigonometry homework. Hey, he's gonna learn how to do all that stuff. Well, that's awesome. But that doesn't really convince me to buy the product, right? Because I can probably learn all that stuff somewhere else. I could pay a professional trainer to come to my house and teach him that, right? Well, what you need to really convince them on is the validity of what it, how do I know that your training is really gonna work? How do I know that? I've never heard of you. I don't know you from Adam. There's a lot of regurgitated and curated, right? That's the, the uh, techie little, well, not techie, but that's the vernacular. That's the buzzword that we've seen pop up in the internet marketing space over the last few years, curated. Well, I've gotta be honest with you, there's a lot of regurgitated and curated garbage out there that's being spun as new and cutting edge information. 
Look, authenticity is a gem to portray in your prospect's eyes. Are you authentic? Is this really good, awesome, you know, stuff or is your you know, prospect going to be running the risk of purchasing something that was really written 10, 20 years ago. And hold on a second. I don't want to jump the gun here because sometimes some information isn't necessarily invented, right? It's just, like I said, it's being repackaged, repurposed, represented in a better way. For example, you could go to two different colleges or universities and take the same class but it's being taught by two different professors. And you could really love one and like get a whole lot out of it and, and just think that it was awesome. And you could hate the other one because the professor wasn't entertaining. He wasn't engaging. He was monotonous. He just, he just basically gave you a big textbook and said, go home, read it, test tomorrow. And you didn't really learn with that guy, but it was the same exact course, same exact test, same exact questions. So a lot of it has to do with the way that the information is presented. We're going to be talking about that. But authenticity, the fact that you're authentic, that you know what you're talking about, that is a really important thing to sell, the source of the information. Authority and accreditation is a great way to show that you basically know what the heck you're talking about. If you've got accomplishments in your specific uh, trade, so if you're an expert dog trainer and you've, you know, uh, had your dogs have won all these prizes in different shows, you should have pictures of that. You should explain all the places that you've competed in. You should have videos of the tricks that your dogs, are, you know, you should have all of these basic medals of accomplishment listed on your website because that is what's going to convince me that you're an authority figure, somebody to listen to in the dog grooming niche or in the dog trick niche or what, what have you, right? So you understand how it's really the source of the information that you have to sell, not the information itself. You got to build trust and social proof is what's ultimately going to create trust in the eyes of your prospect. You got to have customers and beta testers describe the information consumption experience in great detail to your prospects. The example that I made a minute ago about taking the same class in two different colleges, for example, right? Well, if you had a student that actually went through the course vividly describe how cool taking the class was and how awesome it was to learn about doing these dog tricks and how easy it was to implement and how you gave the information in audio as well as video so they could listen in their car and then they actually were able to see videos and learn what they were doing wrong it wasn't just a book well if you imagine having an actual student or a beta test or somebody that's been through the exact course in their own words on your sales page tell the prospect what a great experience they had consuming the in information, right? Not not talking about the tricks. That's, who cares whether he fetched or he jumped or he did trigonometry? It doesn't matter. How how good, how useful was buying this product? Because I can teach him how to use how to do trigonometry by Googling it, right? I can do that. So and, and and now that we're talking about how how you know much fun was the consuming of the information, well, how consumable are you making it? Are you giving them the option to select their favorite form of consumption, whether it's a video MP4, a text PDF, or an audio MP3? Remember, information can be conveyed in a lot of different mediums, right? And those mediums are in the form of digital media, and that could be a video, it could be a text document, typically a PDF because it's the most universally able to be viewed. <laughs> the, the most universally able to be viewed. Don't quote me on that one. But uh, it basically displays easily across a great number of platforms. And uh, the other one would be audio MP3. And you know what? Providing all of these different mediums for your buyer in the members area is so easy to do. And it dramatically increases the perceived value of your product. So listen, how many papers have you written in your lifetime? Think about it. If you've gone to college or any kind of grad school like I did, you've done a lot of writing and you literally paid the college to write for them, right? To be graded, right? Well, how about using those tools that you learned on writing, on how to create a book report, for example, on how to literally curate and gather your own information, do your own research, create your own dissertation, and actually provide actionable content, instructions, information on a great variety of subjects. There's people listening right now saying, well, you know what, Omar, I don't know about anything. Go learn it. Go find what the trending topics are, learn about that trending topic, 
Create a product on it. Create a, literally write a report about it. It doesn't have to be big. It can be 20 pages, 25 pages, 30 pages. Here's where the magic comes in. You're going to take that report that you wrote and then just turn on your microphone and read it. Just read the darn thing into your microphone. Now you've got two mediums. Now you've got an audio version of that report. You've also got a text PDF. Now, do you have PowerPoint? Do you have Keynote? Well, how hard would it be to take bullet points from your text that you wrote and create some slides with it then press the play button on your pro on, on your powerpoint or on your uh, your keynote and guess what now you've got an mp4 now you've got a complete audio course you've got a complete midi media course that you can sell and now you've got a variety of consumable media in your information product you just skyrocketed the perceived value of your product Here's why this, this is important. Because you're saying right now, well, Omar, are we talking about product creation or are we talking about how to sell it? Here's the deal. If you are selling information, it's a lot easier to get the consumer to envision themselves watching a video or listening to an audio than it is to read a PDF. Why? Because you're stimulating multiple parts of their brain, the auditory and the visual cortex at the same time. And you can literally picture this on your sales page you can have a picture of a video screen with your video playing on it you can have a picture of the cover of your pdf you can have a little audio you know like a little music note with a picture of headphones to depict the idea of your audio mp3 you can do all of these things now that you couldn't do when you were just selling a report right is it easy to absorb? Is the information that you're creating easy to absorb or do they need a graduate degree to understand what the hell's going on? Reciprocally, are they going to feel that it's way beneath them, right? And that happens too. Sometimes you buy a product and, and I thought I was buying like a technical how-to manual and it's like, see Jane run. <laughs> see John catch Jane. You know, like it's, it's like, okay, well, wait a second. I thought I was getting so, so again, it, it, is it easy to absorb? Is it too easy? And that really has a little bit more to do with do you know your market? And are you selling the right product for the right person at the right time for the right price? So that gets a little bit more detail, but ideally, it's got to be easy to absorb. And part of your selling process is painting them that picture that not only is the information in there that they need, but it's going to be awesome to absorb. It's going to be fun. They're going to love doing it. They don't need a graduate degree to get through it. Does it take a long time to find what they're looking for? This is another thing, right? And and this is cool because it's so easy to position against, you know, like, oh, how am I going to compete with Google? How am I going to compete with, uh, like, uh, YouTube? Yeah, well, here's how. Here's how. It's you're, What you're doing is micro-targeted. When I do a search on Google, I get, like, like 300 million results and it's like oh god how do i know it's on the first page usually the first page and the second page is full of ads or they're full of fake blogs that are meant to look like they're answering my question but they really just want me to click on something so that i can buy something right so you can position against that. You could say, hey, look, you can go through the painstaking task of trying to find what you need on Google and searching through pages and pages and pages of results till you find that one line, that hidden gem that you actually need. Or you can go right into our site and really easily search what you're looking for, find it, read it in three different ways. We have video for you, text for you, audio for you, and you can you can really, really see how easy it is to search our members area. Let me give you a tour. Right, so you see how easily I just positioned against Google and YouTube? It's all about the way that you make it consumable. Show them how much fun and how entertaining it's going to be to go through your members area discovering and devouring all the abundant material, right? So again, the wording that I'm even using on this slide is something that you could use on your sales page. And you can actually show them, give them a tour of the members area. Show them how you've separated everything into modules for them. So it's not just one video. It's a series of videos. You made three or four videos for each chapter. You've got a page with all the audio chapters. They're downloadable so they can put them on their mobile device they can put them on their iPad they can put them on their iPod they can listen to the to the material while they're jogging while they're working out or while they're cooking dinner they could set the iPad down see what I'm talking about now what I'm talking about now is benefits it has absolutely nothing to do with the information that's going to be consumed it's how easy and flexible the material is being made available to them that's what's going to sell your product your product for you showing them how much fun and how enter entertaining it's going to be to go through discovering all the material that they want to learn about make it easily searchable with top level pages you know 
I make sure that every product that I create, every information product, goes inside of a member's area. People say to me, well, Omar, oh my God, that's why are you going through all that? It's just an ebook. No, no, you see, that's where you're wrong. It's not just an ebook, it's my reputation, it's my brand. And you know what? When you go to Starbucks, it's not just a cup of coffee. It's an experience, and it makes the difference. It's why you're willing to pay $5 for a cup of coffee and stand online just because it's going to have a little bit of whipped cream and sprinkles on it, right? It's an experience, and you need to make consuming of your ebook an experience. How do we do that? We do that by putting it inside of a member's area and giving each one of the customers their own username and password. By giving them a personalized video message when they log in saying, hey, welcome and thank you for, for, for purchasing this product and, and we're here to help you. There's a support desk and, and actually, you know, create, taking the time to create a member's area where you can invite them to become a partner and say, hey, wouldn't you like to get another free, a, a free gift from me by sharing this with your friends? Why don't you partner with me? As a matter of fact, we have a 50% a a partnership program where you can actually share in the revenue from this product on this page you can become my partner learn how to get your affiliate link so you're literally going and walking them through this entire experience then you're gonna to say to them hey how would you like to to consume the information would you like to read it right on your screen here here's a PDF you can download it you can print it and, and you're literally going through. and that's just on one page on the other page is like hey would you like to watch the videos I've broken it up into modules for you I've put one on each one of these pages so now you've created this whole big members area from one ebook, one 30 page ebook. You've turned that ebook into an experience. Let's be honest. I'm willing to pay $19 for uh, uh, an ebook on Amazon and people will download that to their Kindle. They don't have an experience on their Kindle, okay? They don't have an experience on their iPad, but they have that in your members area with all these different formats. Plus, it's an ideal opportunity for you to sell them other stuff and for you to brand other products of yours and to actually cross sell them, right? So, you know, you got to think about how consumable you're making the product for them. Now let's talk about the presentation of the components and a lot of people get this little bit mixed up with uh, you know when I'm talking about presentation on the actual sales page right so what we want to do is on our sales page we want to make a big deal about the way that we are delivering the product so I talked just now about actually you know fleshing out a nice members area and everything look to 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 talk a little bit more about that the reality is that a plain list of download links is a recipe for a refund because it has no thud factor it makes no noise there's no thud right paying for a link is a tough thing thing to justify the next morning your prospects are gonna buy based on emotion that is a fact okay you can try to sell based on logic and and how many amazing features and things you're but you know what at the end of the day your prospects are gonna buy based on emotion did you get them excited nobody gets up in the morning and says oh hi honey i hope i uh, i really hope that omar martin releases a new product today because i had this extra you know 50 bucks in my pocket and I, you know nobody wakes up thinking that they find my products and they purchase them because i take them through the process i, I take them through the purchase decision i raise their impulse from zero to purchase now by getting them excited by tapping into their emotions that's what makes them buy but that's not enough to keep them from refunding. Paying for a link is a tough thing to justify the next morning. And remember, your customers may buy on emotion, but they justify the purchase the next day based on logic. So you might have been up all night watching the QVC Home Shopping Network, and you might have bought a set of Ginsu knives, uh, you know, a new alarm for your car, and who the hell else knows what else, a cubic zirconia ring. And it might have all seemed like a great idea in the middle of the night, but the next day, logic is going to dictate whether or not you cancel those purchases or not. So you need to present your material in the members area in such a robust, in such a dynamic, compelling way that refunding never crosses their mind. You got to give them more product for their purchase, right? So the way you present the information is going to make a world of difference in increasing the perceived value. So marketing is all about perceived value. The value of the product is the value of the product. At the end of the day, if you're selling dog training and you gave them an ebook about dog, train dog training, you can say to them, hey, you got what you paid for. Yeah. And they can also say, yeah, I did. Now I want a refund. 
But you know what? You're not delighting the customer. And that's the key to make, having repeat business. You know, it's not just about having a satisfied customer. Anybody can have a satisfied customer. Making a loyal customer, that's what makes a difference. And if you're not sure if you'd rather have a satisfied customer or a loyal customer, let me ask you this. Would you rather your spouse be loyal or satisfied? Mm. Now, marketing is about the perceived value. So you can't, it's not just enough to make them satisfied. It's, it's you want to, you want to wow them. You want to get them so excited once they, they're like, oh my God, I only paid $20. I feel bad only paying 20 You mean I get videos? I get this? I get, look at all this extra stuff I have in there. It's awesome. Now you don't want to overwhelm them. And that right there is where you're going to have your learning curve. What's too much? What's not enough? Well, testing is the answer, but it really comes down to the perceived value. Are you giving them just what they paid for? Okay, well then you're just gonna have to deal with refunds and you're just gonna have to deal with customers and it's just gonna be tougher. But if you delight every single one of your customers, you're gonna have an awesome power powerhouse of a business in no time at all. Visualization, it's gotta look pretty. It's gotta look pretty. It's like the garnish on a gourmet dish with a tiny piece of food on it. I remember once going to a uh, tavern on the green uh, a long time ago, a long, long time ago. And it was a big deal. Like this restaurant was like this real fancy schmancy restaurant. I, I mean, I must have saved up for weeks to be able to go there. And I go there and they have ravioli on the menu. And it's probably the only thing I could pronounce. And I order the ravioli. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to get ravioli. I got these two little tiny pieces of ravioli on a dish that was decorated with sauces and, and like lines of cheese and all of a sudden I'm like, wait a second, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to starve. This is two little tiny pieces of ravioli because it's all about the visualization. It's about the packaging. It's got to look pretty like the garnish on a gourmet dish with a tiny piece of food on it. So look, you can live in your fantasy world of things are beautiful and unicorns fly and there's rainbows and everybody's equal and, and there's no bullying and, and I won't be judged by the appearance of my website. You could live in that world or you could live in reality with the rest of us where people do judge you and where if your website looks like shit, they are not going to come back. They're not going to buy. They're going to ask for a refund. So the reality is that you need to get comfortable with the fact that you need to make your stuff look awesome and that you need to t you know take the time and invest the money to really create that experience where they're going to be wowed thud factor you know thud factor is a term that comes from uh, direct mail when you send a package to somebody and they put it on their kitchen table it should go thud you know what I mean? It should make a noise when you drop it. It makes them feel like they got their money's worth. You know, there's a little story about when, you know, I now I might be showing my age, but when we went from 12-inch uh, vinyl records to CDs, right? We were, we were we used to buy vinyl records and cassette tapes when I was a kid. And then we made the transition into CDs. But a CD was such a smaller piece of media. It was so small that we kind of felt like, well, wait, hold on a second. How am I possibly going to pay $20 for a CD when a big record album actually costs only 10 bucks? Right, so it was it was a tough sell in, in initially, right? Later on we, we learned to disassociate size with memory and media as things got smaller and smaller. But in the beginning it was a tough sell. And those of you that remember that transition in the early eighties where we went from cassette tapes and, and we went from uh, uh vinyl records into CDs, well, you'll remember, was it the eighties? I might it actually might be the nineties. Okay. Well, what ended up happening is they would release these CDs in this big, long cardboard box. It was like three times the size of an actual CD. Why? Because it had more thud. It made you feel like you were getting more than you were actually getting. All you were getting extra was air and cardboard. But it made you feel better about dishing out twice the price for a record album, uh, you know, for a CD than you were for a record album, right? So you got to kind of give them that thud factor in a digital way. You got to give them their money's worth. Even a simple ebook should be delivered in a member's area, in a wide assortment of modalities, you know, giving them text, maybe giving them various versions of the text. Beneath the actual video, I'll give them a transcription of the video. I'll give them the slides of the video so that they can convert them themselves, they can open them, whatever. I just give them an abundance of media. Give them a tour of your member's area and wow them with the way you're going to presenting the material for them inside once they make the purchase. If they're just thinking that 
that you're like everybody else, then guess what? You are like everybody else. It's your job to show them how you're not like everybody else. Your ebooks are not going to be like every other ebook that they've ever purchased. They're not going to have buyer's remorse. You need to convey that there is no need to fear when making this purchase. Let's avoid TMI syndrome. I hinted on the fact that you're going to have to find that that happy medium, right? What's too little to give? What's too much to give? Well, what's really important is that you, you, you avoid the TMI, too much information syndrome, especially when you're selling information. Paint the picture of a timely, healthy, and enjoyable information consumption experience, right? So here's what I mean by timely and healthy and enjoyable. We all want to feel good about the purchase. We all want to feel good about learning this information and having chosen to learn it from you rather than the competitor. More information does not equal more perceived value. Sometimes light is better. It's often the opposite. Like for example, when I go to a restaurant, just because they pile on more and more and more and more and more food on the plate, that does it. Sometimes I get a plate of food in a restaurant. I'm like, oh God, it's too much. Like I don't even want to eat it. It's just, we recently went to, to one of these places where they cook in front of you and they, and they serve you and the food just kept coming and coming and coming there. And it was like mountains of food on the plate. And it was literally turning me off. I don't know if you've ever had a similar experience when it comes to food, but you've got to make it light, healthy, and enjoyable you got to make them feel like wow this is awesome that i got all this stuff but you can't make them feel like oh god it's too much no because it'll have the opposite effect on you adding a library of ebooks to your offer it might make the whole thing just look too big for them it might just be like become like an insurmountable task they might say well oh my goodness i, I all i wanted was to teach my dog to behave and to get, you know, maybe teach him a trick or two. But now, wow, I got this drug grooming tips book. Now I've also got to learn about the heartworm book. Now I've got to read this other one, diseases that your pup might, oh my God, cancer and puppy. Like he's giving me 10 additional books about dog health. Oh my God, it's just too much. I, I'm just going to go to that other site where the guy's just selling a, a book only about training the puppy. Right. Well, you, you see what just happened there? You thought you were adding value, but you literally talked yourself out of a sale on your sales page because you added too many bonuses and they weren't specifically congruent with what they want. Yeah, they were about dogs, but this person wants to learn how to train their dog. They don't want to learn about dogs with and avoiding cancer. That's not what they're looking for right now. So again, you've got to be cautious about the way that you present the additional information and you can't make it look too big and too tough to digest. Are you truly over delivering? This is important. Are you truly, truly over delivering in your members area? Over delivering is a term that gets thrown around quite a bit in our, uh, in our space, right? But the reality is that it's not the, you know, over delivering isn't that you're making your product more awesome than you claimed it was. It's that you're actually giving them more product than they purchased. Okay. Think about that. A lot of people say, oh man, yeah, I over deliver in all my products. What do you mean by over deliver? What do you mean? You gave 110% when you were creating it? That doesn't, that doesn't mean over delivering. If, you, if you're giving me exactly what you said you were going to give me, you're not, you're just delivering. You're, you're delivering what you said. Over delivering means you give me more than you told me. So I've got unexpected surprises inside of my members area. There's nothing like a pleasant surprise. People love surprises. My wife, she says she hates them, but deep down she loves getting them. And at the end of the day, so do your customers. So be, make, make your customer pleasantly surprised. It's not about how awesome you made your product or over delivering doesn't mean that you make your products awesomer than the other dude. No, stop thinking that. Over delivering means that you gave them more product than they actually purchased. Will they find all this information useful? Another good point that kind of coincides with what we were talking about before, whether you're selling stuff about, you know, dog diseases or dog tricks, right? And are you including the two together? Is it going to be useful information in the mindset of your ideal consumer? Is this going to be, you should, first of all, you should know the demographic you're selling to. You should know the markets. You should know the audience. And if you know the audience, reverse engineering your offer shouldn't be that tough. And it all comes down to, is my ideal customer going to find this additional bonus useful? Or am I just adding stuff in here for the sake of filling it up? You know what I mean? Am I just throwing stuff on the plate here just for the sake of, you know, wow, I just want to make the plate look full, right? And, and that's, that's important. It's often more important than the amount of information that you give. And that is, 
is the is the information you're giving gonna be useful to them keep the information delivery process neat and manageable then demonstrate how clean it is show them that you have a nice simple system for them getting the information that they want to don't make it complicated you know have you ever had to jump through hoops to get a product that you bought for and it's like you pay a product you go to this site sends you to this other site it's you know you don't now they're selling you something else without you even feeling that you've completed the prior purchase process so now you're like well wait a second did i get that other thing did i not get it hold on is there something in my email no it hasn't gone through yet no, make it nice and clean. Make the delivery process enjoyable. Make them, at the end of the day, they should have no questions about their purchase process. If they've just paid you and they don't know where their product is and they're waiting for something and they're not sure what's going on, those are bad feelings to have. For those few minutes that they're waiting for that email to come through or they're waiting for instructions, man, Facebook is open and they are tempted to go there. Man, I just bought this product. And I don't know. Did I just get taken for a ride? I don't know. And even if they go back there and take those words back, remember the internet is written in pen, not pencil. And people will see that. People will see that someone had a hard time buying your product, even if they later go and try to clean it up. It can't be unsaid. Keep it nice and easy. When they're done paying you, they should be taken to the product. They should be explained what's going on. Don't just send them something else and hope they got their receipt in the email. Don't make them log into the payment processor to go click the button. What if they're? What if this is the first time that they've bought an internet marketing product? You don't know. And the idea here is to make sure that you make it nice, neat, manageable, and that you tell them that you're doing this. Tell them, use that as part of your sales process. Explain to them how easy it's going to be. Now, talking of the sales process, like with any sales page, it's important that you anticipate and preempt their objections. What does that mean? Hit them head on with the objection. Give them the objection before they even think of it. If you know your product inside and out, then you know what your consumer's apprehensions about purchasing that product are as well. A recipe for chocolate cake is just a list of ingredients and instructions, right? You're not selling the list though, right? You're selling the taste. You're selling the chef's experience. So that being said, what apprehensions might they have? Well, I'll tell you, they've probably tasted some terrible cake in the past. They're going to have inhibitions about the overall taste of their experience. And you should hit this fear head on. Now, I use the example of a cake, but this holds true with any type of information that you're selling. More than likely, your customer has been burned in the past. They've had a bad experience. The reality is that most people that don't buy, they choose not to buy out of fear. Remember that they've tasted bad cake in the past and it's your job to explain to them and show them and demonstrate to them that your cake actually tastes awesome. Throw stones at your enemy as long as you do it tactfully. This is another one that I see people doing all wrong. I see comparison charts. I see people literally mentioning the name of competitive products and bashing them and, and, and literally saying that product sucks, mine doesn't. You know what? <laughs> That's, you're walking a really, really fine line when you're doing that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, is that going to appeal to some people? Yeah, but it's going to turn off a lot of people. And at the end of the day, when you're talking bad about somebody, you're not just making them look bad. You're also looking bad yourself, okay? It's okay to throw stones at your enemies when you do it tactfully and not to maliciously hurt your competitor's brand. Try avoid using, try to avoid using their name, right? So for example, if you know for a fact that the leading, um, uh, uh, the, the leading cake recipe book doesn't come in audio, uh, or doesn't come in, uh, doesn't have video demonstrations. You can say something like, "Hey, unlike some of the other, uh, you know, cake recipes uh, products that are out there, with our product, you're going to also get videos that show you how to make the cake as well as an audio narration that goes along with the recipe book. So you don't have to worry about having to read it, or you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, reading while you're driving. You can listen to it. So you see how I kind of threw a stone at that enemy because I knew that that's not something that they offer." But I didn't have to mention it and say, hey, XYZ cake, you know, uh, in, ingredient, product, whatever, the, the cake recipe book that they make, it sucks because that company, they don't care about you because they, they don't give you an audio version like we do. 
you know, you're not coming off like a hero when you do it that way. And it takes a very tactful salesperson to do that in, in, a, in a good way. Chances are you're going to screw it up if you do it. So be tactful. Don't maliciously aim to hurt your competitor's brand. Instead, mention things that yours does that theirs doesn't and mention things that uh, yours might not which theirs does. That's another thing that could be just as powerful. We'll talk about that in a second. If there's something that you do and they don't, which will improve the user's consumption of the information, then talk about it. You know, if you've got, um, in, in addition to cakes, you are also going to talk about how to, uh, you know, make cakes in a regular a conventional oven as well as a convection oven as well as a brick oven. So maybe that's something that, hey, look, I'm going to talk to you about the differences of baking this same recipe in these different types of ovens. Maybe that competitor doesn't have that. So you can talk about something that you do and they don't. But sometimes people think that throwing stones at your enemies and positioning against a competitor is just about things that you do and they don't. It isn't. It also goes, it also holds true if there's something that they do and you don't. For example, finding information on YouTube. That's annoying when you've got to watch all those video ads, right? Have you ever watched or, or, or hoped to watch something on YouTube, but you were forced to watch one of those bumper commercial videos in the beginning? It's like, oh, it's so annoying, right? So maybe they've got information or maybe they're using YouTube, which puts these ads and you can use that as a selling point for you. And you can say, hey, we don't advertise in our videos. So all you're getting is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the good taste in cake recipe, right? So you can use something that they do have and you don't to your example, to, to your advantage. It's not just about what you have and they don't. But the key here is to preempt their obje objections, right? So in your sales copy, when you're selling information, think about the inhibitions that your customer is having as they're reading your sales page and address those inhibitions individually in your sales copy. Remember, when selling information, you're mostly selling the source and the consumption experience. Consider a college or university brochure. This is the best way that I can that I can give you this example. They're selling you the campus, the facilities, the staff, the clubs, the activities, the faculty. They're selling you the experience, not the classes. The classes aren't listed in the brochure. I want to thank you for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.